is organized in such a way that uh, the speaker does not see participants. It's really very unfortunate, in particular because if there are questions, then you will not see uh, this re raised hands or some other signs. So in this case, if you don't mind, uh, I will just ask you by voice if there are questions, just to to answer these questions. Well, maybe some of them during your presentations. Uh, well, to help our mm -hmm. audience to understand. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes then. Yeah, OK, good. Then uh, let's start. It's a pleasure for me to present our today's speaker, Tatiana Kovalenko, from the Center of Theoretical Problems of Physical Chemical Pharmacol Pharmacology, very long name for this institution. Uh, yes, and the title of today's presentation, Different Modeling Approaches in the Simulation of Extrinsic Coagulation Factor 10 Activation limitations and areas of applicability. Please, Tatiana, you can begin. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to make this report. Uh, my name is Tatiana Kovalenko, as it was already said, and uh, um, the main topic of my speech will be the blood coagulation cascade. Uh, it is the system of protolytic reactions in the blood plasma. And uh, it is a uh, quite complex uh, system of reactions. Uh, many proteins of uh, blood plasma participate in uh, this cascade. Uh, and as you see here, uh, he, uh, here uh, those reactions are depicted. Uh, each um, schematic representation of uh, protein is uh, one protein. And those proteins can form um, some complexes, some active complexes. Uh, or inactive. Uh, blood uh, coagulation starts uh, we, when uh, the um, blood plasma, uh, something, uh, the liquid inside the um, blood vessel, uh, contact the, extravas the extravascular tissues. Uh, and the cells of uh, those tissues express the specialized protein called tissue factor on the surface. Uh, it is, uh, um, here it is in magenta. Uh, and uh, uh, tissue factor is uh, the main initiator of blood coagulation cascade, and it starts uh, the, the whole system of, of protolytic reaction. And uh, this, uh, um, the first reaction of uh, coagulation is called the in initiation of coagulation. Uh, as a result of this system is the fibrinogen activation, fibrin polymerization, and uh, uh, the blood uh, plasma transition from the liquid stage into the gel one. As I have already said, the tissue factor, it is uh, here in uh, orange, uh, is the main initiator of the blood coagulation cascade, and it is a transmembrane protein, which uh, has a transmembrane domain and uh, an extracellular domain. Uh, it is uh, here it is. Uh, this extracellular domain of tissue factor uh, can reversibly bind the factor 7 active from the blood plasma. Uh, this protein uh, is uh, the serine protease of the blood plasma, so it is uh, the um, active in, uh, enzyme that can uh, proteolytically activate another enzyme. Uh, the uh, binding affinity of uh, factor 7 to tissue factor is quite high. It is about 50 uh, picomoles. Uh, the station is here. Uh, and uh, as a result of binding of factor 7 active to tissue factor is the formation of uh, a catalytically active complex uh, called extrinsic kinase. Here it is. Uh, Tatiana, if I can mm -hmm. ask already a short question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, uh, about this uh, activated factor 7. So, uh, is it already activated? Is there always an activated factor seven in blood or there is some kind of activation? So how it happens? Uh, in blood, uh, uh, factor seven uh, can uh, might be in the form of active factor uh, or inactive. And only uh, about 1% of factor seven active in blood plasma is already activated. So we have about 1% of active factor seven in blood plasma and all other factor is inactive. Yeah, but uh, yes, mm -hmm. and then, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, I would, <laughs> okay. I would, 
I would assume that 1% is not sufficient and then it's kind of self-activating, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, then, uh, when uh, the uh, when factor seven active from the blood plasma uh, uh, binds to tissue factor, it can make a little bit of factor ten active. And here we have uh, the um, backbone, the positive backbone, and factor seven. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the factor ten active uh, can activate the factor seven, which is inactive, and which is in complex with tissue factor two. Uh, because uh, factor seven inactive can bind to tissue factor two. So we have, actually we have two, two complex. We have complex of tissue factor with factor seven active, and we have the complex of tissue factor with factor seven. Both are on the membrane surface because tissue factor is transmembrane protein. And when we have a little bit of factor 10 active in uh, on the surface, uh, this factor 10 active can activate the factor seven in complex with tissue factor into the factor seven active. So we have more uh, active complex of tissue factor and factor seven active. Yes, uh, uh, thank you. It's it's almost clear. The last question I have here: if uh, both of them, uh, both uh, these complexes are on the surface, how they interact? They are fixed to the surface. How they can meet to activate? Uh, because it is factor 10 active, which can diffuse on the surface. It is not uh, uh, those proteins uh, t uh, 10 active and 7 uh, active. They are not um, uh, bind irreversibly. They are not transmembrane. They can uh, bind to the surface irreversibly uh, and they can diffuse on the surface. So factor 10 uh, active can diffuse on the surface uh, to the, the inactive complex. Yeah, okay, thank you. It's clear now. Continue, please. Uh, and uh, one more way, uh, when factor 10 active is formed, it can be dissolved into the solution and bind to this complex from the solution too. So it is not the only one way of uh, activation of this complex. One possible way, I mean. Um, and, uh, okay, uh, here we have a, a, a complex of uh, factor, tissue factor and factor 7 active, which is called extrinsic tenase. Uh, and the main substrate for this complex is factor 10. Uh, it is dissolved in blood plasma, but it is it has it uh, has um, uh, the property of membrane bounding uh, binding uh, with its uh, specialized glad domain in its structure. Uh, this glad domain is calcium bound. Uh, calcium ions are shown in green. They are needed for stability of this domain for. Uh, stability of its form, of its secondary structure. Uh, and they are needed for the membrane binding. Uh, on this picture, uh, there is a schematic representation of GLAD domain only. Uh, and we have here the representation of membrane. And uh, this is the way of how it um, interacts with the membrane. Uh, it's um, some kind of deep penetration into the, the membrane of this domain and uh, even uh, calcium ions are under the surface of uh, this membrane. They are uh, inside the membrane. Uh, and um, uh, this factor uh, can reversibly bind to the membrane with quite high affinity. Uh, and so factor 10 is um, distributed between uh, two phases. Some factor 10 is uh, in the solution uh, and some factor 10 is on the membrane surface. So from this, we have two possible ways of factor 10 delivery to the extrinsic tenase complex. The first way is from solution directly uh, when factor 10 binds to um, extrinsic tenase complex from solution. It is schematic representation of the extrinsic tenase complex uh, with tissue factor, its transmembrane domain and uh, factor seven active. It is just a scheme. Uh, and uh, another way is that factor 10 is on the membrane. It is, uh, it is already on the membrane and it, is, it binds to the extrinsic tenase from the membrane. Uh, both uh, ways um, have some um, experimental and theoretical evidence from the literature resources. Uh, two resources for this way and three for this. Excuse me, Tatiana, if I can if I can interrupt you again. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a very formal seminar, so this is this is why yeah. we can ask. I mm -hmm. think it's better we can ask questions. But in both cases which you explain now, 
this happens at the surface, right? Uh, yes. Uh, Not in the bulk. Yes. It means that uh, this activation of factor 10 is at the surface. It's something that I really need to understand because in in different works, modeling works we did, I, uh, I think that we did not take into account that this is really a surface reaction. I mean, uh, uh, at the surface, I mean, at the blood, at the, at the vessel wall. It's kind of, I think it's r rather often it is considered as kind of a volume reaction of the mm -hmm. activation of this factor. Then uh, it mm -hmm. might be, it might be an essential difference. Yeah. Uh, yes, and actually, the um, one of the aims of my uh, current work, uh, this work uh, which I reported on, uh, is uh, the comparison of different models. Uh, one kind of mod, uh, uh, the first, um, uh, the first version of this model is when we. Um, um, when we treat this reaction as the volume reaction. So we don't uh, really take an account that uh, the distribution between uh, the solution and surface and uh, the fact that it is a reaction on a surface. And the second model which take in account, uh, which takes in account that uh, it is a surface reaction. And uh, uh, my current talk is about comparison of those models and comparisons, or comparison of results of those two models. OK, thank you. Continue, please. Uh, so uh, we have two ways of substrate uh, delivery. Uh, and uh, uh, both uh, ways uh, have um, experimental and theoretical evidence from the literature. Uh, and uh, uh, but uh, all those uh, studies, lit uh, literature studies, um, um, are made in uh, uh, quite different reaction conditions. I mean, uh, different. Uh, different uh, phospholipids concentrations, different uh, factors concentrations, uh, different uh, TNAs concentrations. And uh, our hypothesis was uh, that in different reaction conditions, uh, different ways of substrate delivery uh, can be, um, uh, can exist in this reaction. So in one conditions, it is the first way, in another conditions, the predominant way is another. Uh, so, uh, it, uh, to um, study this question was the first aim of this study. Uh, we choose mathematical modeling to study this question and to study uh, the mechanisms uh, of um, this reaction, the reaction of factor 10 activation by the extrinsic tenase. Uh, there are many models uh, of uh, the extrinsic TNAs which are um, reported in literature. And uh, those models uh, vary from more complex to less complex. Some of them um, uh, took in account the reactance distribution between the membrane solution phases. Uh, some of them uh, take in account reactance diffusion. Some of them uh, take took an account of both of those um, um, levels of complication. Uh, and uh, some of them took uh, in account none of them. So uh, the um, level of complexity of those models is different. Uh, and But we, uh, to our knowledge, there is no direct comparison of models of different complexity. So our second aim was to um, uh, was, was I forgot was words in English and in Russian. <laughs> I have some problems <laughs> um, to design. Uh, we so uh, our first aim was to design models of different complexity, which uh, took in account different levels of complexity. Uh, I mean, reactance distribution between the membrane and solution, uh, reactance diffusion, and even uh, the, uh, the fluid flow uh, to compare the modeling results uh, and to find out uh, the um, modeling conditions in which uh, those, mod uh, those models could provide different results and in which conditions the results are the same. So uh, we try to uh, directly compare different models. So it is, uh, now it is um, aims and uh, 
The first aim was to construct the models which include different levels of complexity. I mean, reactance distribution between the membrane and solution phases, reactance diffusion, and fluid flow. Uh, the second aim was to uh, di compare directly those the modeling results. Uh, and uh, the third uh, is the analysis of the reaction mechanisms, including the way of the substrate delivery in different reaction conditions. Uh, the mod uh, all models were constructed using this uh, reaction scheme. It starts when factor seven active binds to a tissue factor from solution. Uh, then uh, we have factor 10, which can bind to the membrane. And then ternary complex can be formed from factor 10 in solution or factor 10 on the membrane. Uh, and then uh, this factor 10 catalytically activates into factor 10 active, and then it, it can dissolve in solution or on the membrane surface. Uh, in uh, one calculation, uh, we include uh, molecule A. Uh, it is a molecule which is a competitor for the binding site. So it is uh, a molecule which can reversibly bind to the membrane like uh, factor 10 did, but it can't interact with the extrinsic tenase. So it is only a competitor which uh, uh, can bind to some um, binding sites and make them uh, um, not available for factor 10. Uh, so here we have three mathematical models. Uh, the first one is classical homogeneous well mixed system when all factors are distributed uh, uniformly in the reaction volume. Uh, here we have lipids like binding sites distributed in the reaction volume. Uh, and we have some factors which are bind, uh, which are bound to those sites. It is a pool of bound factors, and we have the pool of free factors in solution. So it is classical well mixed system. Uh, the second system is a two compartment, well, so called well mixed system, where uh, we have uh, uh, two different compartments. The first one is three dimensional solution where the factors are distributed. And the second compartment is the membrane surface, which is a two-dimensional compartment. Uh, so uh, all factors in solution are measured in uh, nanomoles per liter. So it is concentration of factor, but all factors on the membrane surface are measured in uh, nanomoles per square centimeter. Uh, it is the surface density of factors. Uh, and uh, when factor binds to the membrane, uh, it uh, turns into this bound factor, which is uh, expressed in surface density. So here we have uh, two compartments, but here we still don't have diffusion. And diffusion in first two system was supposed to be fast enough to be neglected. So in, two, in first two system, we neglect diffusion. We, uh, we assume that it is too, extremely fast. In the third system, it is a heterogeneous uh, system with diffusion. Uh, we have the membrane surface, uh, we have the uh, three-dimensional solution. And here uh, we uh, directly um, include the diffusion of factors in the volume. In the volume, but not on the surface, no? Uh, and on the surface too. Ah, surface uh, too. Yes, they can diffuse in the volume uh, to or from the vesicle or on the membrane surface. It's it is two dimensional in, in the third model, right? In the second model, there is no, neither no, mm -hmm. uh, uh, surface diffusion, uh, neither uh, volume mm -hmm. diffusion, right? Oh, uh, yes. There, the, okay, there is a question from Anastasia, please, Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I had a question here uh, on the third, uh, on the third picture, you have uh, uh, factors 10 activated in the volume of the, uh, in the solution, I would like to ask uh, um, what the mechanism, the factor 10 binds to the membrane, then it activates and then it's uh, released back to the solution. Uh, um, yes, uh, we have it here. Uh, factor 10 binds, factor 10 activates into 10 active, and then it can dissolve on the membrane and uh, in solution. And binding of factor 10 active to the membrane is reversible too, because it is um, factor 10 active is quite similar to factor 10. It has the same uh, it uh, has it has the same uh, membrane binding domain, and it has the same uh, rever uh, reversible binding to the membrane. 
demonstrates the same reversible binding to the membrane. Uh, so it uh, can dissolve from the membrane into the solution, and then it can diffuse uh, in the reaction volume. Oh, I'm sorry, it's here. Yeah, uh, uh, by the way, since we discuss all these questions, uh, uh, can it lose its, uh, I mean, is there a reverse transition from activated factor 10 to inactive factor 10? Um, actually, I think that it uh, is quite impossible because uh, uh, when factor 10 is activated, uh, the um, TNA's complex um, cut uh, the activation peptide from the factor 10. Uh, and uh, this, uh, act this um, peptide uh, diffuse somewhere in the volume and uh, some, some kind of disappearance of it is uh, disappear. So um, factor, when factor 10 is activated into factor 10 active, factor 10 active is without this pe peptide. So it can be inhibited. And as I know, it can be, um, it, um, I again forgot the word. Say, say it. Say it in any language you want. We will then from circulation uh, disappear from circulation. Okay. And it can be inhibited by the tissue factor pathway inhibitor. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, but uh, but reversible, I think it, uh, it is impossible because uh, okay. of the activation yeah. peptide. Yeah, I think we have a comment from Mikhail Pantelev in the chat that prote proteolytic reaction uh, reactions are typically irreversible thermodyn thermodynamically. I think this is close to what you explained, that this reaction is irreversible. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Um... Okay, please continue, please. Let's continue. Uh, so here I summarize uh, all those models in tables. Again, about uh, one compartment in model A, uh, no diffusion, and uh, binding of reactants to the membrane is a one-stage process. Uh, we uh, assume that uh, all, react uh, all reactant in solution can bind to the membrane only like its concentration because uh, the diffusion is very fast. Uh, here in model B, two compartments. Uh, again, no diffusion. Again, one stage binding. And uh, model C, uh, two compartments. Uh, we took diffusion coefficients from literature. Uh, and uh, the binding is a two stage process. Uh, we have factor 10 active diffusion to or from the surface. And we have uh, its binding to the surface, but only from the close vicinity of um, from this surface. So it is uh, like a um, um, like a layer near the surface from which a factor ten active can be bind can be bound to the surface, but not from the whole volume. So uh, model A B and model C uh, um, treat binding in different ways. Uh, here we have some examples of equations uh, in model A. Uh, it is only example for uh, factor 10 binding uh, to the membrane. Uh, factor 10 uh, binds to the binding site. It is composed of N with in index X phospholipids. Uh, and uh, in model A, everything is treated like concentrations. Uh, and uh, we have... Uh, it is a simple uh, reversible reaction, and uh, it um, is written according to uh, the law of mass action. It means uh, that uh, the reaction rate is proportional uh, to the reactant's concentration. And uh, it, yeah, excuse me, but uh, there is no tissue factor and factor seven in the model. There's something I, uh, mm -hmm. I miss here. Uh, because it is only. Um, I don't uh, provide all equations. Uh, I provide only because it is uh, the system of uh, 13 equations. Ah, okay. It's, uh, uh, the yes, model is, is okay. The model yes. is less, it's just a small piece of the model, right? Uh, yes, it is just a small piece uh, because uh, the whole model is too um, is too large and uh, it will be almost unseen on the slide. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, so okay. it is only a, a small part. It is only for binding. Only one reaction. 
Uh, and uh, it is written according to the law of mass action. And uh, we have, uh, uh, for example, for uh, appearance of factor 10 bound to the membrane, it is uh, the um, association constant multiplied by uh, the concentration of the first reactant, it is factor 10 in solution, and concentration of the second reactant, it is concentration of binding sites, where lipids uh, is uh, concentration of phospholipids, individual molecules, uh, and uh, Nx uh, is uh, the number of molecules per one binding site. And we have uh, dissociation. Uh, it is a uh, dissociation constant, kinetic constant, and uh, concentration of bound protein. In model B, it is the same, but with surface densities. Uh, and in model C, uh, we have diffusion of factor 10 in solution. Uh, we have uh, um, equation for, appear, uh, for diffusion of membrane-bound factor 10 uh, and its appearance on the membrane. And uh, uh, the transition of uh, the factor 10 from solution to the surface uh, is written according to boundary condition on the vesicle surface. And it is the flow across uh, the membrane, across the vesicle surface, spherical vesicle, on the sphere, and N is the normal to the uh, membrane of the vesicle. Uh, and it is again uh, forward reaction and uh, reverse reaction. Uh, all, uh, almost all modern parameters were taken from the literature. Only for two reactions, modern parameters uh, were estimated using the reported experimental data. Uh, the first reaction is ternary complex formation from extrinsic TNAs and factor 10 and solution. And the second reaction is uh, ternary complex formation from TNAs and factor 10 on the membrane. Uh, here we took experimental data uh, for the reaction rate dependence on factor 10 concentration from the article. And uh, uh, we tried to um, uh, to um, describe those, model, those uh, results using our models. Uh, those results were gained for uh, vesicles with only phosphoidylhalin, and those vesicles can't bind factor 10 from solution to their surface. So uh, factor 10 can't be, bind, uh, can't be bound to those vesicles. So uh, for uh, this, uh, modeling results, uh, we reduce our model and uh, uh, we um, uh, completely um, switched off the binding of factor 10 to the membrane. So only uh, reactions from solutions exist in uh, this model. Uh, but uh, because tissue factor is a uh, transmembrane protein, it is incorporated in this membrane surface. So extrinsic TNAs is still on the membrane surface because it can't be dissolved in solution. It, it is located on the membrane because of tissue factor. Uh, so uh, we uh, described those experimental data and we found out that um, all three models equivalently uh, provide the same uh, descriptions for those experimental data. And the description is quite good. Uh, our second way to estimate parameters uh, for the second uh, reaction. Now, uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, excuse me, could you return? Yeah, uh, it's a little bit fast. Uh, in fact, uh, you have here two curves, but these two curves correspond to different concentrations of factor seven, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, otherwise the three, as you say, three models give the same result. Yes, uh, uh, they give the same result. Uh, I mean, uh, all three models give the same results for each of those concentrations. So uh, we have, uh, we described the first uh, uh, yeah. dependence with all three, and it yeah. is here. Yes, this, no, I understand that. This is my question. So uh, we take just one, the upper curve, like we fix mm -hmm. this factor seven concentration, and then uh, three models. This is a little bit surprising, uh, no, that you have, or there are maybe some additional assumptions which make that this, three models give the same result or what? Because 
the models mm -hmm. are different and this is the objective of your work to make that in some sense mm -hmm. the uh, to show that in some sense they're different and mm -hmm. in this and in, the, in this experiment you, you obtain that they're the same or something maybe i am missing something uh we uh mm. We estimate parameters for each individual model, models. So for models B and C, uh, parameters for uh, complex formation were the same. So for two, those two models, parameters were the same. But for model A, it is impossible to take parameters the same as here because it uh, deal with concentrations, not with surface densities. Uh, and so of parameters for model A were estimated uh, individually. So uh, let, let me repeat to, I'm not sure that I understand. So you have experimental data shown in this figure. Yes. You, have, you have three different models and you feed models to this data and you determine the parameters of the model from the data. So the data is the same, three models mm -hmm. are different and you determine some of the parameters fitting the model mm -hmm. to the data. Is it what you yes. do? Okay, yes, now, only now, two parameters. Okay, now I understand. It's not that the three models give the same results. This is not true, but yes. the experimental results are the same. You, you have this inverse problem and you determine parameters. Okay, two parameters, so how many yes. parameters for these three different models. So the models are different. Uh, but they, but you use the same experimental results. This is why in this graph we have the models kind of give the same curve. Otherwise, it can be a little bit confusing uh, mm -hmm. because because you you can really we can really think that the same the three models give the same results, but in fact they are not. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, yes. I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay, please uh, continue. It is only fitting parameter estimation. Uh, now we have another reaction. It is reaction two. Uh, and here we have two more unknown parameters. And so we estimate those parameters by fitting the same three models using uh, different data. Those uh, data uh, uh, were um, gained on the surface of uh, phosphodiesel serine containing vesicles. So those vesicles can bind uh, factor 10. So we switched on the binding of factor 10 to the vesicle surface. And again, uh, we fit all three models to those experimental data and uh, parameters were estimated. Uh, again, for models B and C, those parameters were the same uh, because uh, models deal with, uh, uh, deal with um, surface densities and uh, model A deal with concentrations, so parameters are different. But it is quite surprising that parameters for model B and C uh, are the same and the same parameters provide uh, the same description of experimental data because one model uh, add, uh, include diffusion and uh, the, the first one, uh, the, uh, the model B uh, do not. So how do you explain it? It's not, uh, well, uh, diffusion is not essential, it's reaction limited or why mm -hmm. diffusion is not essential? Is it right? Uh, I think that in these conditions, uh, diffusion, uh, because conditions are quite limited, uh, concentration of phospholipid is not uh, very high. So in those in uh, these conditions, the diffusion might be a diffusion in a real system uh, might be fast enough to be um, neglected in model. No, but you say mm -hmm. concentration of vesicles is uh, or phospholipids is not big enough. I would I would assume just opposite. If this concentration mm -hmm. is small, diffusion is important. Mm. Because, when you have, because mm -hmm. they 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 have larger distance to to cross due to diffusion. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, diffusion in solution, but diffusion on the membrane surface. Ah, you talk about uh, yes, surface diffusion. diffusion ah. Yes, surface diffusion, because we have a quite limited uh, surface. So mm -hmm. all factors are quite close to each other. And uh, so they can readily um, uh, collide with each other. OK, surface diffusion may be, but uh, volume diffusion, yes, might, volume diffusion be, might be important. Mm -hmm. 
but we have results which uh, uh, told us that uh, that model with and without diffusion can provide similar results with uh, for similar parameters. Okay, thanks. Uh, and uh, our next uh, now we have all our parameters and we fix all those parameters in all physical calculations. All those parameters are fixed. We don't change. Uh, reaction rates we don't change um, size of size of binding sites or so on so everything is fixed uh, in those models uh, and uh, then our next step was to analyze the system in pre in uh, different reaction conditions uh, the first uh, um, the first version of condition is uh, uh, the system in presence of uh, vesicles without tissue factor, so-called net, net vesicles. So we have some vesicles, uh, quite low concentration of this tissue factor. It is only 40, uh, non, uh, 40 nanomoles of phospholipid, not vesicles, phospholipid, individual molecules, I mean. Uh, and uh, quite large concentrations, small or large, of net vesicles, which do not have tissue factor on their surface. And we have experimental data from this article. Uh, it is points, uh, which demonstrate uh, that uh, the reaction rate uh, decreases with uh, addition of, of, phospholip of phospholipids without tissue factor. Uh, we uh, have two. Um, we have hypothesized that there are two reasons for this reaction rate decrease. Uh, the first reason is that uh, uh, the um, next vesicles can bind factor 10 from uh, the solution. And so this factor 10, which is bind to the next, to the next vesicle, uh, is not accessible for the extrinsic DNA complex. Uh, and uh, uh, so it is uh, um, this kind of uh, reaction is uh, included in all three models. So in all three models, those vesicles can simply bind those factors and uh, keep them on the surface. Uh, and the second reason is the slow diffusion of factor 10 from uh, the surface of next vesicle to the surface of tissue factor bearing vesicle. something with connection well i had some problem it's i had some problem of connection or it's not it's everybody had i yes. don't know it seems well, like everybody Tatiana yeah 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 i think we lost we lost our speaker i'll try to write your option delete I have a problem of connection. Well, sorry for technical problem. Uh, apparently, there is a connection problem uh, for the speaker. So let's let's wait a minute. Um, Mikhail Alexandrovich. Uh, could you maybe write the phone in the chat and I can uh, call Tatiana? Tatiana has a, a problem of connection. Yes, seems like this. Mm -hmm.
I called her, uh, Tatiana, she said she tries to connect. I think we should wait a couple of minutes more. Time. Uh, yes. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will share screen again. I have some problems with internet. Some kind of bug. It suddenly switched off. Okay. We will not have any problems in the. Uh, yeah. Second part. Uh, yes, and uh, uh, well, uh, actually, I can't remember where we finished. Uh, and uh, well, did you, uh, you, yeah, this is the screen. You explained us this curve mm -hmm. decreasing curve that there are two possible reasons mm -hmm. why the curve is decreasing. One is the first was because well you you can repeat mm -hmm. uh, one was because this competition between uh, well these different mm -hmm. vesicles and another because of diffu surface diffusion this is what mm -hmm. you say uh, because uh, uh, diffusion uh, between those vesicles because uh, when factor ten is activated on the t, t shift bearing vesicles it uh, um, is activated into factor 10 active, and so factor 10 active um, become uh, becomes abundant on the surface of this of this vesicle, tissue factor bearing vesicle. Uh, so uh, to um, uh, to have more factor 10 near this vesicle, we uh, need to uh, wait until it diffuses from uh, the um, tissue factor uh, next vesicle. So from one vesicle to another, uh, and uh, so uh, the reason for this decrease might be slow or factor 10 diffusion. Uh, so uh, in model A and B, there is no diffusion. So only in model C, diffusion is uh, included. Uh, and uh, here we have different, uh, different modeling um, results for those, uh, for those experimental data. And models A and B uh, provided the same um, qualitative description, but different quantity. Uh, and uh, model C provided the best description. Uh, so uh, the uh, rate decrease is 4.7-fold for models A and B. And it is 7-fold for model C, which includes the diffusion. So from those results, we um, expect uh, that about 70% of the rate decre uh, decrease result from uh, the factor 10 segregation between two vesicles. Uh, and it, uh, uh, it's uh, accumulation on the next vesicles. And about 30% results from its slow diffusion. So those uh, two reasons of the, for the reaction rate decrease uh, are quite comparable. Uh, and uh, to, um, to check that uh, this uh, profound decrease results from diffusion, uh, we um, increase the diffusion coefficient 10 times. And uh, the model C, but with diffusion coefficient, which is 10 times higher, provides the same descriptions as model A and B. It is exactly the same. Uh, so uh, we can... Uh, tell that uh, this decrease is from diffusion. So, uh, uh, so we have 70% 70, 70, 70 decrease from uh, the factor 10 accumulation on the next vesicles and 30% from its slow diffusion. Uh, so in this system, diffusion between next and tissue factor bearing vesicles uh, have effect and uh, should be uh, included. Uh, 
for accurate description of data. Our second, um, our second uh, numerical experiment was uh, for uh, increasing concentration of tissue factor bearing lipids. So we have tissue factor concentration fixed. It is uh, fixed for all concentration of phospholipid. And phospholipid concentration rises in uh, extremely wide range. Uh, and so uh, with the rise of phospholipid concentration, we have uh, the uh, tissue factor surface density decrease. Uh, because uh, uh, more phospholipid, but the same situation of tissue factor, so uh, lower tissue factor surface density. And in those cases, uh, we have uh, different model results for model A and model B and C. Uh, model A, um, we have no experiment, unfortunately, for this, uh, um, for this numerical experiment. But uh, we can compare them uh, with uh, another system on the membrane. So we have model A, uh, which uh, provide the plateau, and models B and C, which provide the bell shape of the dependence. And this bell shape is the same as was observed for the intrinsic TNAs. It is another complex of blood coagulation, which can activate factor 10. And it is uh, the picture from uh, this article. Uh, and uh, here we have the bell shape. And we have comparable reaction rates. And we have comparable uh, phospholipid concentrations where we can observe the decrease of the reaction rate. Uh, so uh, here uh, we have uh, div uh, here we have a qualitatively different results for model A and model B and C. Uh, the difference between model is that uh, they, uh, model A uh, does not uh, include the, um, a factor, uh, the uh, factor segregation between solution and uh, membrane. Uh, and uh, two because mo model A uh, did not include two compartments, but model B and C did. Uh, so here uh, we calculated that in model A, uh, we have only concentration of factor 10, and it increased from 135 nanomole to 197 nanomole in the end. And also almost all factor 10 is bound to the membrane. Uh, and uh, as we have only concentration, yes, we have uh, the increase of the reaction rate. Uh, but for surface density of factor 10, is every, everything is different. It is about 1.43 uh, somewhere here. Uh, and it is uh, 0.13 in the end. So we have a substantial decrease of uh, uh, the uh, factor 10 surface density. And because of this decrease, we have the decrease of the reaction rate. Because uh, we have uh, uh, more, um, more place between those factors and uh, less um, and uh, lower rate of uh, its collision and binding to uh, the um, extrinsic TNAs. Uh, so uh, from those two pictures, we can conclude uh, that uh, models B and C uh, provide better description. Uh, and uh, mm, so for those high concentrations of phospholipid and low tissue factor surface densities, uh, we have, uh, mm, uh, we should include uh, two compartments, solution and uh, surface. Uh, so, uh, but uh, for lower phospholipid concentrations, uh, the um, description is the same by three models. So we have intermediate conclusion. Uh, models can equivalently uh, describe uh, data in uh, some range of conditions, uh, but they demonstrate different behavior for high uh, tissue, uh, for high phospholipid concentrations. Uh, it is uh, about uh, more than 40 micrometers. Oh, I'm sorry, micromoles. Uh, our next step was to, uh, to analyze the model sensitivity. Uh, and we analyze uh, it in uh, different reaction conditions. Uh, the first condition is so-called low lipid, low factor 10, uh, low factor 10 concentrations. 
uh, we have uh, extremely low concentration of phospholipid uh, and uh, uh, we have uh, extremely low concentration of factor 10. Uh, and uh, as tissue factor concentration is, is uh, constant, uh, we have a quite high uh, tissue factor surface density. It is about uh, 100 molecules per micrometer. Uh, and for those conditions, uh, we uh, calculate the model sensitivity to variations of different parameters. Uh, and uh, for variations of all parameters, the model sensitivity is lower than one. Uh, but here uh, we uh, provide um, parameters uh, sensitivity to uh, which are higher than 0.1. Uh, so uh, parameters for which the model demonstrate the best sensitivity. Uh, and uh, so uh, we, uh, from this, we can conclude that uh, the mod uh, that models are more sensitive to parameters of factor 10 binding to the membrane. It is uh, a kinetic constant for binding. It is factor 10 concentration. Uh, and the size of binding site and lipid concentration too. And for model C, because it is not applicable for models A and B, it is uh, diffusion coefficients for factor 10. Uh, for uh, another conditions are uh, so-called high lipid, high uh, factor 10 concentrations. We have uh, quite high concentration of lipid. We have high concentration of factor 10. And uh, uh, because uh, tissue factor concentration is the same, we have uh, low uh, tissue factor surface density. Uh, and in those conditions, uh, the model uh, demonstrates the best sensitivity uh, for uh, the TNAs formation parameters and ternary complex formation parameters. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, well, we are listening to you, or you have already finished. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, why do you ask about questions? I... Uh, because it is intermediate conclusion, the next slide. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, I don't see questions from the audience, so mm -hmm. you can continue, mm -hmm. please. Uh, actually, I uh, just uh, try to find out uh, whether it is something broken or, so, or everything is okay. <laughs> uh, no, no, the okay. connection, connection is good, so yes. please continue. Okay, uh, so intermediate uh, conclusion is that in different conditions, uh, in different conditions, uh, there are different rate limiting uh, stages for these reactions because reactions are uh, more sensitive for variations of different parameters. So uh, reactions which are represented by those parameters are the rate limiting uh, stages of this reaction. And those rate limiting stages are different for low lipid, low, uh, low uh, factor 10, and high lipid, high factor 10 constri uh, constriction. Uh, for, yeah, for example, in the second case, diffusion is not limited, right? Uh, yes, in second case, diffusion is uh, not limiting at all. Uh, and uh, uh, we have only uh, parameters for uh, TNAs formation. It is uh, kinetic parameters. It is concentrations factor 10 and uh, factor 7 active. And it is ternary complex formation. But uh, except for diffusion, these coefficients uh, are the same in these two cases. I mean, sensitivity, more sensitive mm -hmm. or different. Uh, for diffusion, all diffusion coefficients are. No, 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 no. I mean, mm -hmm. without diffusion, these other coefficients you have in the second case and in the first case, they are, they are the same or different? Uh, uh, Kin kinetic, mean... kinetic coefficient, sensitivity to kinetic. Uh, yes. Kin uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so, so most sensitive coefficients in these two different cases, they are the same or different? Ah, more more sensitive. Uh, you mean the? Um, oh, for example, K, K K two, for example, if you take ah, K two. Uh, sensitivity for K two uh, here it is uh, uh, higher than uh, O point one, and here it is uh, quite uh, low. It is mm. lower than O, o point one and. Uh, uh, often it is lower than 0.2, or, so in, I'm sorry, 0.01. Yeah. So in fact, sensitivity, yes. all, uh, even for kinetic coefficients, sensit yes. sensitivity changes, right? Yes. OK, thanks. Uh, and uh, our next step was to analyze the ways of substrate delivery. Uh, the first. Uh, 
uh, we have two possible ways of substrate delivery. And for both ways, uh, we uh, calculated uh, uh, the we calculated fluxes. Uh, the first flux is I1 membrane. It is the flux of factor 10 binding to the tenase complex. Uh, and uh, here we have uh, um, here we have uh, equation for it only for model B. Uh, we analyze ways of spread delivery only for model B uh, because um, it is not as time consuming as model C. And it is not it is uh, complex enough uh, to um, uh, to explain data in uh, case of high uh, lipid concentrations. So it is complex uh, yeah. enough to describe here. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, but uh, I'm not sure what is uh, substrate delivery. What does it mean? Mm. Uh, it means uh, uh, the way of factor ten delivery. Yeah, uh, so we have two ways. Uh, it is uh, the first way is that factor 10 um, uh, binds to uh, the membrane and then it binds to uh, tenase. So it is binding from the membrane. Uh, and the second uh, way uh, is that it binds to tenase directly from solution. Just sit on uh, this complex and uh, form ternary complex. Uh, without membrane. Uh, and uh, for those two ways, uh, we calculate the association flux uh, and the cessation flux. And from those two fluxes, we calculate total flux. It is uh, association flux minus cessation. Uh, the same is uh, for binding from solution. Uh, and uh, here uh, it is uh, only example of uh, time dependence of those fluxes. So uh, for those modeling conditions, uh, we have uh, the flux from the membrane, this one, it is in black here, uh, at least two orders of magnitude higher than uh, the binding from solution. Our next step was to, anal uh, to analyze those fluxes in presence of uh, different phospholipid concentrations. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, calculate from those fluxes uh, the uh, total factor 10 concentration, which is bound from membrane, or, I'm sorry, which is bound from membrane and from solution. So uh, like uh, integral of total flux, from zero to time T reaction. T reaction is uh, always equal to three minutes. So it is the quantity of factor 10, which binds to the extrinsic tenase from solution or from the membrane uh, during the time, three, uh, during three minutes of the reaction. Uh, and uh, here uh, it is uh, a quantity of factor 10 uh, and uh, in black, it is uh, from the membrane factor 10 for high lipid concentration. Uh, dark gray is uh, factor 10 from the membrane for low lipid concentration. And light gray and uh, white are factor 10 from solution. Uh, so for all those factor 10 concentrations, uh, we have uh, uh, the, uh, we have uh, um, no. Uh, for, for all those factor 10 concentrations, the predominant way of factor 10 delivery is from uh, the membrane because we just compare them and we found out that uh, during three minutes of the reaction, uh, the majority of factor 10 which bind to this complex was from the membrane. Uh, our next step was to analyze in a wide range of conditions. Uh, we uh, change factor 10 concentration in a wide range and tissue factor surface density in a wide range. And we find out that in uh, almost all conditions, in, uh, um, in many conditions, we have membrane delivery pathways and solution delivery pathway uh, uh, is predominant only for extremely high tissue factor surface densities. 
Uh, it is uh, six multiplied by uh, 10 in the power of minus three. It is extremely high tissue factor surface densities because uh, surface densities which exist in nature are at least one order of magnitude lower. So it is extremely high surface density of tissue factor. Uh, and uh, for all surface densities of tissue factor, for all studied factor 10 concentrations, uh, we have uh, membrane delivery pathway um, as a predominant one. Uh, this is correct for a low uh, lipid concentration and high lipid concentration too. In both, uh, in, uh, both calculations, uh, we have uh, factor seven active concentration equal to 100 nanomoles. It is quite high. Uh, because it is, um, we need to make it enough to um, uh, form TNAs with all this factor fa tissue factor. It is uh, a, uh, I forgot. It's a very short. Yes, a saturated concentration. Uh, so our next step was to analyze substrate delivery pathway in the um, presence of molecule competitor for the binding sites. It is molecule A, which can bind to uh, the binding sites on the membrane, but can't interact uh, with uh, the TNAs complex. Uh, and uh, uh, here, uh, when we um, compare this uh, and uh, this, uh, we find out, oh, I'm sorry, we found out uh, that for low uh, molecule A uh, affinity for the membrane, uh, this affinity is lower than affinity of uh, factor 10. For low affinity, uh, these uh, ways of substrate delivery are almost unchanged for quite high concentration of, of uh, uh, molecule A. And uh, when its affinity is higher than affinity of factor 10, uh, we have substantially different results. Uh, and uh, membrane delivery uh, pathway uh, is predominant for lower tissue factor concentrations than, in, uh, than it was in this situation. Uh, so uh, only in case if molecule A have higher affinity than factor 10 to the membrane surface, uh, it changes the reaction mechanism. Uh, and again, uh, we calculate the reaction rate in presence and absence of the molecule A for constant, all other concentrations constant, uh, and uh, for right tissue factor surface density. And uh, we found out that for low tissue factor surface densities, it is a case uh, when uh, the substrate delivery from the membrane is predominant. Uh, only in case if molecule A have, <coughs> has low affinity to the membrane, uh, the decrease of the reaction rate is substantial. But when its affinity is higher than affinity of factor 10, uh, the situation is almost unchanged. Uh, and uh, it is final intermediate conclusion uh, that uh, substrate delivery from solution is predominant for extremely high surface densities only. And for physiological surface densities, substrate is delivered from the membrane and uh, that the molecule competitor for the binding sites influence the reaction rate only when its affinity is higher than factor 10 affinity. Uh, to uh, understand, uh, factor 10 affinity for this model is about 50 nanomoles. So it is, um, uh, this affinity, uh, 860 nanomoles, is one order of magnitude higher than affinity of factor 10, and this is one order of magnitude lower. Uh, the, fi uh, the final section, uh, it, uh, we, uh, uh, we create the model in flow. As, uh, we uh, put the vesicle of this reaction on its surface in flow conditions. And the flow was laminar. And we calculate uh, the um, flux of factor 10, forma factor 10 active formation in two conditions, in flow condition and in non-flow condition. And then we... Uh, compare two models, one in flow conditions, and one, it was model C from our previous sections, uh, without flow. Uh, and uh, we found out that the rate of factor 10 activation is different in flow and non-flow conditions only when we have substrate depletion. 
Substrate deflation, of course, in non-flow conditions, because in flow conditions, the substrate is delivered by the flow. Uh, so, final conclusions. Uh, that in a wide range of conditions, all three models are equivalently applicable, but uh, for high phospholipid concentrations and for low tissue factor surface densities, uh, we need to um, take into account the distribution of uh, factors between membrane and solution. Uh, in uh, different conditions, uh, there are different rate limiting stages for the reaction. Uh, Substrate is delivered from the membrane in uh, physiologic conditions, uh, and uh, models in flow and flow conditions provide different results only in case of substrate depletion. Uh, thank you for your attention. Well, uh, thank you, Tatiana, for this interesting and complete uh, uh, presentation of this topic. So please ask the questions from the audience. May I ask? Yes, please, please, yes. Anastasia. In one of the last slides, you um, you present the model with uh, uh, flow, with blood flow, and you said that uh, the movement ball is taken into account. Oh, uh, yes, uh, it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. What yes. is the it Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, just for simplification because uh, we have uh, a vesicle uh, which should move uh, with the central layer of fluid. Uh, so uh, to avoid um, including the moving vesicle because it is computational, uh, computationally expensive and time consuming, uh, we uh, uh, apply moving wall conditions. So we fixed fix vesicle uh, and uh, apply uh, the um, and apply uh, the velocity of central layer of fluid, which which is expected in the central layer of fluid, to the walls in opposite direction. So it is only for it is a um, method of modeling. So they are not moving like uh, in uh, I don't know. Uh, radius projection, but they are moving in horizontal. Uh, yes. Yes. Well, yes. I think I think it's in some sense change of coordinates. You kind of. So it is not the wall moving in sense that it decreases this radius or something. Like that. No, uh, no, yes, no. of course. Yes, no. thank you. No, no, of course, not yes, of course, but no, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and one, one more question: You put this vesicle in the. Uh, flow in the center of the vessel, as it's shown in the picture. So does this reactions um, happen on the vessel walls? Or these reactions that you consider can happen in inside the... Uh, mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, those reactions don't happen on the vessel wall, but they happen only on the vesicle surface. Now this is this is what I in fact what uh, what I was going to ask also. But mm -hmm. why do you say why why do you say that it doesn't happen on the wall? In fact, I think uh, it's kind of mm -hmm. traditionally that mm -hmm. that it, uh, coagulation is initiated at the wall. No. Mm -hmm. Yes, they uh, they can uh, happen on the wall. Of course, when we have a um, um, when we have a creation site on the wall. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the wall, like uh, maybe disruption of the wall, but here uh, we have uh, uh, this this model uh, um, refer referred to situation when the um, blood vessel is intact, it is not damaged, but yeah. we have procoagulant vesicle inside it. Yeah, but uh, from the from a more general point of view, mm -hmm. uh, you there are always some vesicles in uh, in blood. Yeah. Uh, so why would not coagulation happen spontaneously then? Because what you explain, it looks like there is no special initi initi initiating mechanism. So it can happen like like that. You, mm. Like in the beginning, you, you, you told us there is always 1% of activated factor 7, and this mm -hmm. is sufficient to start mm -hmm. further initiation where factor seven activated increases, factor 10 activates. So what is the mm -hmm. difference here? Uh, 
what uh, what that, what prevents here spontaneous coagulation? Uh, thank you for this question. It is quite difficult because uh, first of all we need a tissue factor for in for initiation. So if the vesicle is without tissue factor, uh, it uh, is not initiator. Uh, and uh, uh, why it is not um, it, it doesn't flow spontaneously in the vessel. It is, um, I think there is uh, no um, direct answer in all articles I read because uh, we have some tissue factor positive vesicles in. Ребят, пожалуйста. Спасибо. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mm, we have some tissue factor positive physicals in normal circ circulation, so um, mm, but uh, actually there are some inhibit uh, inhibiting mechanisms in uh, the blood flow, which can inhibit blood co blood coagulation, uh, and. Um, well, yes, it is quite. Uh, Quite interesting question: Why it is not clotting spontaneously? But I think that there is uh, that we, now we don't have uh, answer for it. Yeah, cannot it be because, because well, if the concentration of vesicles is not high enough, maybe yes. it's just not enough to initiate just the whole volume reaction, but it it stays just near the surface. Can it be like that, for example? Mm. Maybe yes, but on the surface uh, reactions, when uh, we have uh, a blood, um, oh, I'm sorry, when we have uh, disrupted um, vessel, uh, we have uh, some so, uh, we have some activation site where uh, platelets can adhere and they provide procoagulant pro pro uh, surface. In this uh, situation, when we have only tissue factor positive vesicles, there are not no activ uh, activated platelets, so uh, this surface uh, is um, uh, might be uh, less procoagulant. Uh, it, but yeah, so uh, it is not. Um, mm -hmm. It is not clear exactly. It, it is not clear, but uh, yes, maybe the may, maybe the flow maybe the flow can some somehow. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, yes, inhibit but... inhibit this initiation, mm -hmm. right? Because what you yes. say, what you say in arteries where there's this uh, high velocity flows uh, and initiation initiation at the vessel wall, as you say, it's uh, uh, platelets protect this injury site from from the flow, right? Uh, if, as as you explained, for for vesicles it's different. Platelets mm -hmm. do not protect, but at the same time, um, since this vesicle uh, flows together with the flow, there is no this velocity difference which removes yes. which removes these uh, coagulation factors. So indeed, it's not a it's not a simple question. There are some yes. comment. Let's see what we have here. Yes, Mikhail Pontelev, the traditional view is that there is tissue factor in the circulation. An alternate, alternative is that there is, there is a sub-threshold tissue factor. So if, if tissue factor concentration is not high enough, so it's not sufficient to start that. Mm -hmm. The third possibility is a tissue factor in blood if sub-threshold because of flow and uh, inhibitory action of endothelium. Uh, correction, uh, the traditional view is no tissue factor, is no tissue factor in the circulation. Okay, so I think that it's really an interesting question and maybe, <laughs> maybe it deserves a, deserves a special uh, discussion about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe some other time uh, uh, we can, we can uh, return to this question. Mm -hmm. Also, Mikhail adds, that it is extremely difficult to measure this experimentally. Yes, very good. So, Tatiana, so to summarize, you can see the three different models with the, well, sometimes results are close, sometimes are a little bit different. So, if we consider like a more complete model of blood coagulation with this thrombin uh, production and then like fibrin and so on, 
how should we proceed with this understanding and this experience which you what you present about the activation so what is uh, how, how we should what of these three models we should insert in the more complete model of blood coagulation if we don't want to be it extremely complex is it sufficient to take this more simple model without diffusion and without uh, different compartments uh, actually from those results uh, uh, we can um conclude uh, that we can take uh, model uh, B without diffusion, but with two compartments. Uh, as uh, the um, uh, most, um, as a good compromise. Yes. Uh, because it is not, uh, it is, uh, it, ha it has the same computational expense, expensivity, <laughs> uh, the same computational cost. Uh, for uh, to compute as the simple model A, they are uh, they are actually the, the same. Yes, uh, but for computation. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. but uh, this is in the case if we have really vesicles in in our system and in, in well in flow, for example. Yes. If we don't if we don't have vesicles, we just do it as usual at the wall initiation at the wall, right? And, oh, yes. And we don't. Uh, okay, it's another level. Okay, I think that it's really. A very good point, very interesting point about the introduction of vesicles in flow, because with colleagues, in particular with Alexei Belyaev present here, yes. uh, we started several problems about initiation of blood coagulation in the bulk, like for example in aneurysm or in left mm -hmm. atrium appendage, and all the time we have this question about how initiation occurs at the vessel wall or in the bulk in, uh, and in different conditions in fast flow, stagnation flow, things like that. So I think that introduction of these vesicles and all this initiation mechanism which you presented today, I think that it might be very interesting and very important uh, from, the, from this point of view and maybe in particular for stagnation flows, maybe in fast flows, my, well, you say that, okay, flow is not important. Uh, mm -hmm. It was one of your conclusions. I'm, mm -hmm. not com I'm not completely sure. Maybe it's not so important in fast flows. In slow flows, the presence of vesicles and this initiation mechanism uh, might be may, maybe is more important. I don't know, but I think it's really it's really an interesting and important questions for for all the studies. Okay, so uh, and maybe well maybe we can return to it later. I, I think that it's it's really one of well in all this you know of course we construct this endless models for all possible situations and things like that. Uh, <laughs> So the, maybe the, the, it's one of the missing points in all these constructions, these vesicles, which come from time to time to the discussion, but it was up to now, it was kind of a little bit uh, not very well, not very precise because in fact, we did not really consider in details, in detail all this mechanism you explained us today. Thank you very much. So other, other questions or comments uh, from the audience? Well, if not, then uh, I would like to thank you again and also to thank all our listeners and we finish our today today's seminar. Have a good day. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.